How long have you had these paints? About three or four seasons. They're for sale if you want them. Let me see your paintbrush. You don't need to see his paintbrush. We don't need to see his paintbrush. These aren't the paints you're looking for. These aren't the paints we're looking for. He can go about his business. You can go about your business. Move along. Move along. Move along. Hey guys, Sean here from Ardnor Studios. Nice to see you again. Uh, this video is coming to you a couple of weeks after the last one. Uh, probably will be the uh, way it'll go for a little while. I have a lot happening in the shop right now, getting ready for the Calgary Comic Expo. But nonetheless, uh, this week we're working on something exciting. It is a display stand, a Star Wars themed Tatooine desert town look. Uh, it is from start to finish. I know a few of you have been asking, do I only work in pink foam? That's the starting point. From there we move on to painting and some of those other bigger projects we paint at a later date, but this guy is kind of start to finish. So there you go. I do actually use paint. Um, so anyways, let's jump into the video, show you how uh, I went about making this uh, little display stand. And uh, yeah, let's go from there. Well, this project starts with a large piece of pink XPS foam. We're cutting it down here. This is uh, six inches wide. I'm making some strips. There are three main pieces to this uh, item. You can see them here. So the base of it, we're going to carve down and um, just trim up the edges, round them off uh, using a, a utility knife here to cut away at it. Be careful if you're doing these kind of things. Uh, you need to remember at all times we are holding sharp implements in our hands and uh, yeah, never cut towards you unless you want the camera to capture it and make it look really cool. Uh, the nice thing about the foam is that it can be really roughed up like this. It doesn't have to be smooth, even cuts because um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some sandpaper and uh, clean it all up and the foam really takes uh, the sandpaper well. Please, please use a mask made of small particles in your system. And like I said, the sandpaper really uh, cleans up those edges. All right, a little texture on everything using a rolled up tin foil ball. Say that three times quickly, good luck. And uh, yeah, gives some nice uh, texture to the whole thing. As always, the trusty hot glue gun to assemble the different pieces. I need to pull out the trusty book of knowledge. number of notes and uh, different items taken here and um, we're gonna make this guy here it's a buttress piece that goes along the uh, front of the display stand and I've got some detailed notes here on how to make it it's always wise to keep your notes uh, this is a great uh, piece it's from shifting lands uh, I'll have a link down below it's called an angle slider and you'll see as you put it on the wire cutter, as it moves along, it's on an angle, so it cuts everything on an angle. There you go, it even says what it does. So we wanna go from that corner part way in. So by lining stuff up, sliding it across, it makes this cut nice and easy for us. You could do all of this with a ruler and a blade, but it just makes it so much simpler to do it this way. notches out of the top of it here. This is for it to fit underneath the top piece of that display stand. A little bit more hot glue and a bit of a friction fit and it goes right in there nicely. All right and that's what we have so far. That's kind of the main pieces of this build. So 
So, uh, maybe a little cup of tea would be nice. Sadly, that mug broke two days later. So here's a little magic trick. I've got a thinly sliced piece of foam and I take my template out and I do a little tracing. And we have that symbol. It's a number. Do you know what number it is? And we're going to carefully cut this out. This takes a bit of time, effort, and precision, uh, but it can be done and uh, can create a really, really cool result. All right, some more glue and put it into place here. bit of a kind of um, a drifted piece of sand running up the side of the wall so we're gonna carefully carve away a piece of foam and it will fit right in there at the uh, base where it attaches to the wall so Luke what did Yoda ride when he was young I don't know a womp rat no a do cycle a do cycle yes Luke a do cycle, because there is no try. All right, sorry for the bad dad joke there, but you know, gotta keep up uh, what we're doing. And all jokes aside, this video will actually have some painting. shout out to my nephew Finn. He's a Star Wars baby born on May the 4th and I made one of these uh, display stands for his birthday this year. So working with uh, brown, just straight brown, these are cheap craft paints from uh, Michaels here in Canada. Uh, work really well. We're going to cover the whole display stand with this brown to start with. have some fun texture on this so we're actually going to add sand. So I've got some watered down uh, PVA glue, or uh, in this case it's kind of carpentry glue, um, and just water down, paint it on, and then we're just going to dust sprinkle on the sand all over, and that will give us this really, really great texture uh, at the bottom for us to work with. shake off the excess. So once that's all dried up, I'm putting on another coat of the pretty thick, getting it in all the different cracks and grooves and spaces between the sand. And I'm using our hot summer outdoor warming center let it all dry up. Next we're going to go with a golden brown on top of this and I've just dusted it on really lightly. The video didn't work so you didn't get to see that there but you'll get to see me doing it here. Uh, this is a dry breath, dry brush method uh, that um, has got very very little paint on the paintbrush. You try and get as much off as you can on a piece of paper and then very lightly just dust it on. We're not covering it, we're just really trying to hit the high spots and the edges. And that is kind of the effect we get, so it's already adding a lot of life to this. 
Down on the base, I'm going to put it on a lot heavier. I'm not dry brushing here, I'm just kind of coating it on. We want to see some of the brown show, but we don't need all of it. Uh, next is an ivory. Same effect again, but even in this case, less paint on the brush. Dusting the edges and anywhere there's some raised spots. We'll even go across on the flat areas. As a comparison, that bottom part has been done and the part to the top hasn't, and you can see the difference. I'm doing the base again, a little heavier on the sand area. All right, and back to the golden brown. For golden brown, this is stupid. Yeah, I know it seems kind of counterintuitive to go back to a color you already used, but what we're doing is we're trying to get layers of these different colors on top of each other so they kind of show through. Uh, this golden brown will cover up a little bit of the ivory we just used, but not all of it. Um, you don't have to do this. It's up to you. I like doing it. And then sadly, again, we're going back with the ivory, uh, just really, really lightly dusting it on on the different edges. And all these different layers will blend together and make a really, really cool effect. see the bottom part's done and the part to the left hasn't been and uh, like I said it gives a really really good kind of stone sand effect uh, vanilla now on the bottom this is quite a bit brighter obviously I'm trying to make it look very sandy down there and again it's placed on fairly heavy and now to the last part on the base it's a dark gray mix up a nice wash so I add some paint followed by a good amount of water stir it all up and there we go just slosh it on it's gonna get in all the little cracks and holes between all the sand and the lighter stuff is gonna show on top of it And this is what it looks like. It is still wet, so it'll dry up a little bit better than this. The final item, I want to put a stripe on this. Um, I'm using some painter's tape that is not very sticky because I don't want to pull up any of the work that I've already done. And I'm just masking off a bit of an area for the stripe. some cadmium red. Now I'm going to use the slightest amount of paint on the brush. You can see I'm really trying to get it all off and I'm just dusting it on so lightly. I just want a kind of a trace of it there, not super bright. All right, like Christmas morning, I'm kind of unwrapping it here. see it's there there is a bit of a line obviously because we masked it off and I'm just gonna lightly dust along the line to make it blend in a little bit more and make it look a little weathered all right that's the process I went through to make these display stands um, they are fun to make they look really cool they work very well with action figures uh, I do have some of them available for sale I do sell items in my Etsy store the link is below and I also will be at the Calgary Comic Expo as I mentioned selling them at the booth there that's in uh, September so if you're interested drop on by uh, I want to say a big thanks to everybody who supported me. If you are enjoying these videos, please subscribe, uh, like. It all really helps. We're trying to grow this channel. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I hope you're getting something out of it. Make some comments if you want. I'm certainly willing to respond back. And uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes to. So anyways, let's have a look at some of the uh, beauty shots of this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep making.
big thank you to my patrons. Uh, you guys are awesome. I thank you for all of your support. Uh, if any of you are interested in learning some of the skills to make items like this, uh, think about uh, joining the Pink Foam Brigade. That's my Patreon site for tips, tricks, and tutorials. Uh, link below. Have them on the table at the booth um, at Calgary. Ah. I hope you're enjoying the video. The, <laughs> the thing that that. So that's we that this. Ah. Thank you for coming by. This is the video in the. Blah.